and welcome back to the channel, of course. The Requiem Journals has been quite the thrilling experience, I hope, for you, listening to our tales of nightmares and suspense. It's me again, your host, the Requiem. I have something for you today, something very special, a uh, short, you could say, one specifically from an old acquaintance that I'm sure you will remember. Hey, tell me what you think about it in the comments down below, and remember to like and subscribe, and share it with your friends, and of course your enemies, so they can suffer along with you. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> My name is not important, but what is, is what must be said. I used to have everything. My life was so fulfilling. A wonderful family, a nice job, and an excellent group of friends. However, as the old saying goes, all good things must come to an end. This occurred to me back when my so-called wife broke our sacred vows by cheating on me with my then best friend. I remember catching her, well, them, in the act. I had gotten strange hints of what my dear son called the nicely dressed man that visits mommy often. I decided out of curiosity one day to remain home and give credence to this little story by my son. Soon enough, he appeared. I stalked from afar and watched as she betrayed me. The succulent embrace, the warm greeting, you think they had known each other forever, like their souls were intertwined. As they moved upstairs, I entered the house and grabbed my nine-millimeter I kept locked in my cabinet. As I thought about what I was going to do, I noticed my son had entered the kitchen. His eyes, so innocent. I hugged him and kissed his forehead for at this moment, I knew his life would be forever changed. I sent him outside to play in the yard and quietly walked up the steps. The sounds I heard as I approached strengthened my conviction to do what must be done. I barged in, gun drawn, as my wife screamed. I didn't let my friend speak as I swiftly ended him. Seeing him slump down to her side as she cried out hadn't satisfied me as I believed. Her begging and wishing to apologize only angered me further. And thus, I struck her down and carried her out of my sacred abode. I instructed my son to go back inside and I looked upon him one last time before leaving. I then began to drive to a rather rundown building on a very sketchy part of town. One where I knew I could carry out my work without being disturbed. As I entered the rundown building, I passed several homeless druggies, and what I believed to be corpses. Those will come in use later, I thought. However, I went into a dark room and fired a single shot, causing the two cokeheads inside to flee. The darkness and grotesque conditions would do nicely. After all, it was more than what she deserved. I went back outside to retrieve her, and after doing so, I laid her upon the disgusting bed. I began beating her, inventing my frustration, and as she awoke, I questioned her. How long? Honey, please, she said. I'm sorry. How long, woman? I demanded. She replied, a year. I sighed in disgust as I opened my suitcase. She then pleaded again to stop what I was doing, but I asked her, did you, did you stop? No, you proceeded to tear our family, our love, our life apart. And now she was going to pay for what she had done. As I pulled out a syringe, she struck me and tried to escape the room. 
<laughs> but she, <laughs> she was delaying the inevitable. I paced behind her as she screamed for help, and I injected the syringe in her neck. She slumped to the ground, and I dragged her back onto the bed. Her last few words were, Don't, don't, what about Timmy? I slapped her in my anger. How dare she mention my boy? I'd come for him tonight, as soon as I was done with her. And thus, I began my work. A few cuts here and a few slices there. I knew she could feel every slice, courtesy of the little concoction I whipped up. Every part of her I saw him touch, I threw. I threw it across the room, on the floor, blood strewn about everywhere. I then felt at ease, knowing that vengeance, no, no, justice had been served. It was now time for me to flee town and get my son, so I took a junkie's hoodie and pants, and in my guise, got ready for a long walk back to see my dear boy. I believe I didn't get the chance to tell this part before I was interrupted before. As I look back at that mangled mess I used to know, I could only help but say, well, my love, <laughs> it looks like this is where we part ways. It was certainly satisfying. Stick around. There's more fun for you to be had here at the Recreant Journals. I'm your host, the Recreant. And until we meet again, I fare thee well.